Um, but I know this week, Earth Week, uh, Earth Day, Earth Month, we are wanting to celebrate the Earth because she is our mother, she is our home, she is our body. And, you know, for me, uh, also I, I just want to say too, when I was a college student, I would come to events like this and I have like really good memories of, of coming to events like this and hearing people from the community speak and being really inspired. So uh, I hope, you know, <laughs> starting this talk, I hope, starting this talk that I hope, I hope that I can do the same uh, for the students who are here today and, and anyone else. Um, so I've been working in this uh, environmental movement, you know, uh, running organic farms, working on urban gardening, urban farming for the past 10 years. And I know I started off 10 years ago feeling really excited, feeling really hopeful, feeling all this energy, like I, you know, I felt like there was this direction that I was going. Um, and over that 10 years, I just felt that energy just totally wane from me. And I started to get into a place of uh, a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety. I started to feel a lot of depression um, around you know, the state of the earth, the health of the earth, our relationship to the earth. It really started to just weigh down on me. And I felt like everything that I knew, everything that I had learned, um, it just, it wasn't feeling like it was enough. It felt like I'm not going in the right direction. And I started to have this image in my head, actually, of, of this big boulder kind of, you know, rolling down towards me. And I'm, I'm like pushing it up, you know, and I'm fighting back against it. And I just felt like, man, this thing is going to crush me, you know. There's just nothing I can do. I, I even had the thought, like, this boulder is so strong, like, the only thing I can do is join it. Maybe I should quit everything that I'm doing. Maybe I should quit organic farming. Maybe I should just get some, you know, get some other job, try to make as much money as I can. And I, I haven't made much money as an organic farmer, I'll tell you that. Um, maybe I should just quit all of this and just, just do what, you know, whatever else like that I can to get by, try to find whatever happiness that I can doing that. But I really couldn't see a way forward. Um, but, after going through, and I'm, I'm still kind of going through, after going through a very dark period in my life, I've, I'm starting to come out, and I'm starting to see a way forward, and I'm starting to feel that hope again, and that is really what I want to share with you today. Okay? Um, and I also want to say, these ideas, they're still new to me, like I'm still understanding them myself, depending on where you are, what I say today may not make any sense to you. You may not get it at all. I'm totally okay with that. I think uh, if you don't get it today, you're gonna get it. It's, it will make sense to you. Hopefully what I'm saying is gonna guide you at some point. Okay? So I wanna start, um, I'm gonna just make a few statements. And what I want you to do is just raise your hand if you agree with this statement. All right, if that, if that statement resonates with you, just, just raise your hand and also please look around the room, okay? This is a group activity. I want you to look around the room and see who agrees with you. Can we do that? Okay. All right, so there's like six of them. <clears throat> okay, first one. Humans are causing climate change. Okay, please look around. Please look around. All right, next one. Climate change is unnatural. Ooh, okay, no, that's unexpected for me. All right, okay. We must reduce our footprints to save the earth. Okay, look around everyone. Please keep your hands raised for a second. Everyone look around. Okay. People are destroying nature. Okay. 
We must reduce our footprints to save the earth. Okay, you're all looking around. Just keep, I, mean, I want you to look. I want you to see how many people are, are in agreement with you. Okay? Death is the opposite of life. Oh? A little confused? I see a little bit like... I wasn't sure if to include this one or not, but I, against my wife's advice, I did. <laughs> I leave the city to get out into nature. Okay, we're looking around? Okay. All right, I think that's the last one. Oh, whoops. Okay. Okay, so we had a lot of agreement with these statements. Um, if anyone disagreed with a particular statement, does anyone disagree with a statement that they feel like they want to share why you disagree with that statement? Anyone? Okay, okay. I see one over here. Very good. All right. Thank you. <laughs> what? What would be the opposite of death? <laughs> okay. We don't have to answer that right now. But just something to think about. Uh, any? Any other one? Anyone else? I saw. Yeah, right here. All right, Can I, I'm gonna do like a twinkle or a click, you know, whoever, whatever co-op rules you're using. I'm, I'm in with that. Um, okay, so thank you, uh, thank you both, both for sharing. Um, so I just wanna let you know that I actually disagree with all of those statements, okay? And I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't work for an oil company. I'm not paying to be, pay, being paid to be here by the Trump administration. Um, I disagree with these statements because of the assumptions that they are based on. And those assumptions have been taught to me my whole life. They've been taught to me by every school teacher, every university professor I've ever had. And those assumptions are actually baked into our language. And that's what makes it so difficult for us to see them because we can't really, the way that English is, we can't actually really talk without just saying them. They're just, they're in the language. And I really want you to understand the, the connection between language and culture, okay? So, um, Uh, so the, I didn't actually want to show you that, but okay. Okay, all right, we're, we're already here. So I want to give you the definition of nature from the Oxford Dictionary, okay? And you can see it right here. Oxford defines nature as the phenomena of the physical world collectively, including plants, animals, the landscape, and other features and products of the earth, as opposed to humans and human creations. You reading that? Because when I read this, I thought, whoever wrote this must have been high off of their mind. You know? Humans are not included in the word nature. But last time I checked, I am a product of the earth. Everything I ever ate, everything I ever did, everything that I see, every person I've ever interacted with, every tree I've ever seen, every plant I've ever grown, that's all here on this earth, is it not? <clears throat> Our culture is teaching us that we are separate. It's in our language. And what that teaches us is that everything we do 
damages nature because we are not part of nature. That's the message you've been told. You are not part of nature. How can you contribute to nature? You are apart from nature. Every activity you do is going to damage nature. Everything you do is a sin, which is damaging nature, a sin against nature. Eating food, you're causing climate change, right? Washing your hands, you're causing climate change. Taking a shit, you're causing climate change, right? This is your messaging, right? I mean, become, listening to an environmentalist has been, become like listening to a missionary. Stop using so much water. Don't eat meat. Drive less. Reduce your energy use. Make less trash. Go zero waste. Save the whales. Save the ocean. Reduce your footprint. Don't. Less. Zero. Reduce. Less. Don't. No. 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 Reduce. Stop. Make yourself into nothing. Reduce your footprint. Make yourself very, very small. Make yourself so small that maybe you disappear, right? Make yourself have no impact, right? I remember watching a documentary many years ago called No Impact Man. Very popular environmental documentary, No Impact Man. The zero waste movement. Make yourself zero. How many of you, just, I, this is a very serious topic, but how many of you have ever thought, oh, the best thing I could do for the environment is just to kill myself? How many of you, I've thought that. How many of you have thought that? Raise your hand. How many of you have thought the best thing I could do for the environment is to not have kids? Right? Because what's your assumption? Your assumption is your kid is going to damage this place that your kid is going to have as, has no way of contributing to this earth. I was just talking to a friend of mine and he, he said exactly this. He said, I was talking to my wife and we don't think we should have a kid because, you know, one more kid, one more person to feed, one more climate change, more carbon dioxide, all these things, right? So, what I'm here to tell you today is that is all a load of bullshit. Absolute bullshit. And I'm a farmer, I actually like bullshit, but in this case, that is bullshit. So I want to tell you, my message is that you are not separate. You are one, you are one with nature, you are nature. You are, you know, as Oxford said there, you are a phenomenon of this physical world and a product of the earth. When rivers are polluted, your blood is polluted. When forests are cut down, your lungs shrink. When soil is degraded, you are degraded. You are one with this earth. <clears throat> when we realize the wholeness of this earth, the unity of this earth, we see very clearly the solutions to our greatest problems. That to heal ourselves, and to heal the earth, we cannot continue to break the world down into smaller and smaller pieces. We heal by making whole. We heal by building up. By breaking things down, we're not going to understand the whole thing. Okay, we have to see this earth as it is. It's one whole living being. And we are whole living beings within that whole living being. So we cannot sit around, we can't stand on the outside, remove ourselves, and say, oh, if we step back, then the earth will heal. No, because you are, you are the earth. You have, to, you have to heal. The earth has to heal. So what I'm asking you to do today is not to... Oh, no, this, is a, this is a quote, actually, I've been using. Sorry, I meant to put this up earlier. Albert Einstein said, a problem cannot be solved with the mindset that created it. And I like to just update this quote a little bit and say, a problem cannot be solved with the culture that created it. So what I'm asking you to do today is not to reduce your footprint, but increase it. Increase your footprint. Let the world know you are here. 
Break through the concrete covering your soil soul and plant a garden. Feel the soil grow softer and richer under your feet as, the, as you compost the ideas and systems that do not serve you. Find every friend you know that has ever been told that she is worthless, unwanted, unneeded, wasted, and show them how piles of shit make the most beautiful gardens with the richest soil and the sweetest fruit. And do all of this inefficiently, gloriously inefficiently, slowly, with care and love, and plenty of breaks for rest, recuperation, enjoyment, friends, and family. And before I close, I want to I want to leave you with some examples. This is all uh, kind of new information for me. I'm learning about this as well. I'm glad that we had a uh, indigenous. A musical performer here, and, and maybe if she doesn't know these facts, she'll appreciate these as well. Um, so I just learned Everglades National Park, that's 4,000 square miles of land. It's at the southern, the southern part of the gun of Florida, you know, that bottom part. That, all of that land was created by the indigenous people, now they're known as the Seminole, who planted gardens on, that, on what was very marshy land, that, those gardens captured the soil that was being carried by runoff waters from rivers and streams. The soil collected behind those gardens and built up. And that whole section of Florida was actually created by those indigenous people. Their gardens created a quarter of Florida. And now, uh, as those gardens have, are being turned into farms and development, that land is actually disappearing. Okay? Their gardens were whole, are literally holding Florida together. The Amazon rainforest, the largest and most diverse forest on Earth, also known as the lungs of the Earth, has an unusually high concentration of trees bearing large and sweet nuts and fruits. There's a tree called the Brazil nut, there's a tree called the ice cream bean or inga, I actually grow those. They form the majority of the overstory trees of the Amazon. They're planted so closely together, they have such large fruit that the only explanation is that the entire Amazon forest is a garden that was planted by indigenous peoples. And now, I actually just learned yesterday, I was watching a talk online, uh, someone's just written a book, they're doing LIDAR scanning of the Amazon forest, finding evidence of huge, large-scale earthworks, man-made earthworks all through the forest, because they can see through the trees with this LIDAR technology. And last example, uh, how many of you went to see the wildflower bloom this year, Lake Elsinore, Antelope Valley? Oh, come on. Just a few, okay, yeah, some more people went, right? Um, I went I went this year, I went two years ago, and you know, growing up here, I, I was born in Southern California, I grew up here. I kind of heard, you know, California poppy is our state flower, like, you know, whatever, didn't care about it, but didn't mean anything to me. And, uh, and you know, I got into gardening, and it still, it, like, wasn't that, didn't really, like, uh, click for me, like what does that, you know, what does that mean? What, why is that important to me? Um, and then we, my wife and I went two years ago to Antelope Valley for the first time and we saw the, the poppy bloom and all the other wildflowers. And, you know, it was like, it's like a shocking experience, right? The, uh, the amount of beauty there is, is just, like, uncomprehensible. And I, I also learned that there are accounts of uh, Europeans when they first arrived here saying that the poppies lit up the coast. The entire California coast was lit up with poppies. That's why, you know, it's, called the, it's not called the Golden State because all the grass dries out every spring. It's called the Golden State because at one point there were so many poppies that part of the year the entire state would be golden. Um, and the final thing that I learned is that there is nothing wild about these flower, flowers. 
When we say wildflowers, we are erasing history. We are erasing the history of the indigenous people who spread, cultivated, and planted these flowers in amazing gardens all across our state. We are erasing their history, we are erasing their accomplishment, we are erasing their genius, you know? Wildflower, oh, it just came up with wildflower. It's not a wildflower, this is, this is a legacy of human activity, of, of gardening, you know, of, of masterful gardening, like we can't even comprehend that we are still benefiting from these gardens, still finding them amazing, a century after they've actually been, been even cared for? It's crazy. So, just to, to close here, um, my message is very simple. We need to change our culture. We need to talk not about how we can prevent the climate from changing into catastrophic extremes. We need to talk about how we can help the earth, how we can contribute, how we can actively participate in moving the climate towards balance. I want climate change. I want climate ch the climate to change towards balance. I'm actively engaged every day of my life in trying to make the climate change towards balance because it's already unbalanced. So reclaim your power. See the unity of life and find your role. Become a tree planter, a soil builder, a water diviner, an earth therapist. Find courage and strength in your friends and family who root you to this earth. Increase your footprint. Let every step you take leave behind gardens and forests where trees, animals, birds, insects, fungi, bacteria, and people can find nourishment. Thank you. Thank you so much for speaking. I just learned so much in the past 15 minutes and I feel <laughs> extremely inspired. I hope you all do as well. Um, so we do have some time for questions from the audience. So if anyone has a question, just raise your hand and I'll come around to you. Yes. Hello. Hi. My name is Paulina. I was just wondering if you always looked at um, like the ecosystem of first, like the planet, and through a cultural perspective, because the more that I get in tune with like my history and my culture, I realize that we've always taken care of the earth. Like we've always had that relationship and that knowledge that we are connected, that we're not separate. Yeah. And have you always looked at it that way? I think it's wavered for me. Um, my cultural background is one of more, you know, the. I'm, I'm, my family is from India, and and there is that sense of connection and culture. Um, but I think it's actually even even with all of the wisdom I found in my culture, and all of its you know, it's, India has a very rich history, a very rich history of of thought, of expression, of uh, spirituality. Um, I'm finding more and more that. Although I learned a lot there, I'm needing to learn a lot more from the indigenous cultures who have, they have a, they seem to have a way of relating to the land that is far deeper than um, even what, you know, my culture could provide. Um, so, you know, if, if and, and that's not to say that, you know, all cultures are indigenous in some, in some way, um, but I think there's, in a lot of cultures that are based in farming and not in tending forests and, and uh, um, it's so hard to describe. I mean, I, I, I'm still like wrapping my head around it myself. Um, yeah, I just think there's, there's something very different to, to 
living. I, I have to give you an image, actually. Okay. Um, when people talk to me about gardening and oh, I want to start a garden, like the garden I know, I know that they're thinking of is this garden that you know it's it's here on the ground in front of them, like it's contained, and and they're standing over it, and they're and it's their garden, you know, and. I've come to see that, that that's, a, that's a problem. Like, the world, that's not what a garden is. A garden is actually, you are there, and you're in it, and it's around you, and it, I mean, it is you. It, you're, 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 just, you're just there. You're, the whole world is a garden, you know? Um, and we need, to, we need to see it in that way, and that we're not, we're not, we are powerful, but we're not controlling. We're just moving things around. You know, we kind of play, uh, we make little shifts here and there, but we don't, we don't stand over it and like tell it what to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. Can I just do like one follow-up question? Sure. Because uh, I've been thinking of the way that like the state of the earth or like all these catastrophes, like the way we treat it, like I feel like that's a reflection of the way we treat ourselves, and then that we can't heal the earth until we heal ourselves. Absolutely. Because I think you won't have that connection if you can't treat yourself that same way. Because um, I even read a book called Writing Seagrass and it's had a portion that said, by restoring their land, we restore ourselves. Yeah. And, and, the, and the, yeah. the other way, right? By restoring ourselves, we restore the land. Yeah, yeah ab 100%. Absolutely, no doubt. Okay. And honestly, I think that's what I've been missing. Mm -hmm. You know, up until now, I've always, I've. And I see. I think this is what a lot of people do: is, oh, I'm not important. I need to spend all of my energy on, you know, caring for the earth. But you cannot care for the earth until you care for yourself. And and that's where I got lost. I was caring too much for, you know, not seeing myself that oh, I'm I'm in this earth and I I can't care for it without caring for myself. So yeah, please don't burn out. You know. Uh, it's not fun. All right, thank you so much. I think we have a question over here. Hello, my name is Gil. <clears throat> uh, first off, I just want to say I really admire what you're doing, organic farming. I think it's something that I kind of want to do myself in the future to get myself connected back to nature. Um, in terms of farming, do you see, uh, like, small-scale animal agriculture being part of this whole return to nature? Or should we just focus on vegetable gardens? Sorry to be blunt here, I think your whole question is just wrong. Okay. And not to say that you're wrong, I'm just saying you're, you're looking at the problem the wrong way. And what there, there, you, you, said, um, you said back to nature, right? Yes. You never left nature. Okay? This is all nature. You're sitting in nature. Okay? These tables, these chairs, this building, this is all nature. You can't leave it. You can't go back to it. Um, in terms of farming, you know, I ran a... Actually, I have one of my interns here from my farm, Mona. It's one of my, my favorite, favorite, I don't, don't tell anyone else, <laughs> you're one of my favorite interns. Um, and so I, I, ran, I, I ran this uh, vegetable farm, I still have it, still figuring out what to do with it now. Um, and you know, for me, at the end of three years running this farm, I felt really empty. Um, because when you're running a, a vegetable farm, right, like, you're, you're kind of like spending all this energy to go nowhere. You know, if you walk away from that farm at the end of five years, all you have, maybe you have some better soil, but like you haven't really, uh, there's just, there's so much more that you could have done. Like there's so much more that, could, there's so much more richness that, your energy could have created. And so now, I'm really just like, I'm all about gardening now. You know, like, 
I went back, I started gardening, and then I thought, oh, I need to farm, I need to like grow produce and sell it, you know? And I really think that's not the way anymore. Like, I think it's all about, there's something different about gardening than farming, and farming is still like about control. And gardening is really about not giving up control, but just like, it's like a dance, you know? And you're just moving, th you're moving things around, you're moving around like you're in it, you know, you're, you're, you're flowing, you're in the river. Um, and farming is still like, you're trying to straighten the river and make it move at right angles. So, sorry if I'm not giving like any clear answers, because none of this is clear to me myself yet, so that's just where I'm at, all right? Thank you.